So a thermometer is a cylinder with some kind of liquid in it. As the temperature of the liquid increases, the molecules start moving faster and the volume of the liquid also increases. So um, at that point, the liquid inside the thermometer takes up more space. And so then it looks like the, the liquid is moving up because it's increasing in volume. Anybody can make a thermometer out of any kind of liquid. In the past, um, mercury was used, but um, that causes neurological um, problems. So now typically they use alcohol in thermometers and it's got dye in it. That's why it looks red a lot of the time. So say you wanted to make a thermometer. Say you wanted to make a Celsius thermometer. How would you do that? Well, you'd get one of those very tiny cylinders. Um, they're called capillary tubes and you're going to put some alcohol in there and you're going to close one end of the capillary tube. Then you're going to stick it in ice water. And the ice water, so water has a temperature of zero degrees Celsius. So if you have ice and water mixed up, it's going to have um, a melting point um, of zero degrees Celsius. So in the ice water, you'll make a mark on your little glass tube. Then you're going to stick that same glass tube into some boiling water. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. And so you'll wait till um, you'll give the um, liquid enough time to expand. And then once you're certain that it's done expanding in that boiling water, you'll make your second mark. And then you'll just divide, you can use a ruler or whatnot, divide the distance into 100 equal uh, segments. And each one of those segments is equal to 1 degree Celsius. The Kelvin scale has the same size segment. So this is really important to know that 1 Kelvin is equal to 1 um, degree Celsius. Not that one in temperature, but one unit of Kelvin is equal to one unit in degrees Celsius. And you can see that in the image. The, the lines look the same. Fahrenheit is a little bit different and we got to be careful because it's not a hundred between the two marks. So in the Fahrenheit system, water is freezing at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and boiling at 212. So that's quite a few more segments in there. Over here was only 100, right? Now, um, this is, what is this, 180 segments, right? So they're going to be uh, quite a bit smaller. All right, Kelvin system, really, really cool. So in the Kelvin system, there's no negative values. Um, this becomes really important in our gas laws chapter. And this is accomplished by taking the temperature in degrees Celsius and adding 273.15 to it. Um, and how do we create this kind of system or what is it based upon? It's based upon absolute zero. And so absolute zero is, is a theoretical kind of idea, but if we were to reach absolute zero, theory tells us that um, all motion, all molecular motion, all uh, movement of electrons, any kind of motion would just completely stop. Um, so I've seen temperatures really close to absolute zero, like 0 0.5 Kelvin, um, but I haven't ever seen or heard about anybody actually reaching zero Kelvin. It's still um, a theoretical um, value, a theoretical ideal. So the main takeaway for Kelvin, no negative values, and the size of the unit is the same as the degree Celsius, and that's why you can just get away with adding 273.15 to your degree Celsius temperature. All right, so we need to start working on temperature conversion. This is the formula I like to use. If you have a different formula that you like to use, by all means, just make sure that you're consistently getting the correct answer. The other thing is there's no need to memorize this. If this were a face-to-face -face class, I'd give you this formula on a formula sheet during the exams. Just know how to use it. 
So we're given the temperature, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're asked to convert it to Celsius. So since it's in Fahrenheit, we're going to put 32 in on the left on our equation. So I'm going to have 32 equals 1.8. And so I'm solving for the temperature in degrees Celsius. So instead of writing all that jazz, I'm just going to change it to x and plus 32. So now we're going to treat this just like we would any other algebra equation. I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides, which leaves me with 0 equal to 1.8x. I'm sure many of you already see that x is equal to 0, but for completion's sake, I would divide each side by 1.8 and I'd get x equals 0 degrees Celsius. Now this should sit well with us because when we were going over the temperature um, scale, those thermometers, we said 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature that water freezes and that's also 0 degrees Celsius in the other system. Kind of already should know that one. Alrighty, so on this one we're converting Celsius to Fahrenheit, but we can still use that same equation. The only difference is that I'm going to plug in the 9 in this spot right here on the right hand side. So x or my temperature in degrees Fahrenheit is going to be equal to 1.8 times 9 plus 32. So I put the parentheses, but it's probably not necessary because order of operations tells us that we should multiply before we start adding. When I did that, I got 48.2 as my answer. So 48.2 degrees Fahrenheit. I want to talk about sig figs with our temperature conversions really, really quickly. The general rule of thumb for sig figs is to maintain the same level of precision. So remember when we're talking about measurements, I said that you always have to go one beyond the line. So assuming that the person took this measurement correctly, they had precision to the ones place. So even though we're converting to a different system, um, we wanna maintain that same precision. So we're gonna round this number to the ones place. So this will be 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Alrighty, 212 degrees Fahrenheit to degrees Celsius. This should sound familiar. 212 degrees Fahrenheit is the temperature at which water boils. So we can kind of predict that it's going to be 100 degrees Celsius, but let's make sure we can get that value um, algebraically using our formulas. So I plug in the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit on the left. And so now I need to subtract 32 from each side. So I get 180 equals 1.8x. And I'm going to divide each side by 1.8. That leaves me with x equal to 100 degrees Celsius. And again, we always need to pay attention to units and sig figs. This has three sig figs, so I want to maintain the three sig figs down here. So I'll put a period there, so it's really clear to the reader that um, we had precision to the ones place on our thermometer. Next one. I already plugged in the negative 25 on the right hand side for the degrees Celsius. So in my calculator, I'm going to do 1.8 times negative 25 plus 32. When I did that earlier, I got negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit. So x is equal to negative 13 degrees Fahrenheit. So converting between Celsius and Kelvin is a lot more straightforward because one unit in Celsius is the same size as one unit in Kelvin. So I added the extra sig figs on here. To convert between the two, we either have to add 273.15 or subtract 273.15. 
So in this direction, when we're going from Celsius to Kelvin, I'm going to add the 273.15. So I'm going to do 55 plus 273.15. That gets me a value of 328.15 Kelvin. And remember, with temperature conversions, you're always going to go back to your original number. Look at the precision there. This goes to the ones place. So we're going to round this one, our answer, to the ones place. So I'm going to write this as 328 Kelvin. So in number 22, since we're converting in the opposite direction from Kelvin to Celsius, we're going to have to subtract this time. So I'm going to do 42.0 minus 273.15. When I do that, I get a value of negative 231.15 degrees Celsius. Perfectly acceptable to have a negative number for the Celsius system. It's Kelvin where there's no negatives, right? Um, this goes to the tenths place, so we're going to want to round this one to the tenths place. I'm going to report my final answer as negative 231.2 degrees Celsius. Alrighty, so the last four problems are the most challenging of the bunch because each of the conversions is going to require two steps. So for instance, in number 23, I'm asked to convert Fahrenheit to Kelvin, but I don't have a formula to do that. So I'm going to do Fahrenheit to Celsius first and then Celsius to Kelvin second. Um, let's set a couple up together. So. The Fahrenheit is going to go on this side. So I'm going to write negative 80 equals 1.8. And I'm solving for the temperature in degrees Celsius. So I'll do that as an X plus 32. I'm going to subtract 32 from both sides. Remember, when you do a negative minus a negative, it becomes even a larger negative number. So over here, we're going to have negative 112 equals 1.8x. I want to isolate x, which is the temperature in degrees Celsius. So I'm going to divide each side by 1.8. That gives me x equal to negative 62 point, and I have one of these uh, repeating values. So the two just keeps on going and going and going. Keep that number displayed in your calculator because remember the sig fig rules tell us that we don't want to round anything until we're completely done with the problem. So if you get negative 62.2222, just add the 273.15 which is going to get it in Kelvin for us, right? Because degrees Celsius plus 273.15 will give us a Kelvin temperature. So after I did that, I got 210.927. I believe the 7 kept on going. And this would be in Kelvin. Looking up at the sig figs, this is a um, non-significant zero, right? It's just a placeholder zero. So since this is a placeholder zero, remember with temperatures, we're going to try to keep the same level of precision. So in all honesty, we only know our number to the tens place. So maybe someone's like, it's negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, what is that in Kelvin, right? If you're just kind of estimating the same way you go outside, ah, it feels like it's 70 today. You don't really know the ones place. So the best we can say over here is that it's 210 Kelvin. So the same situation where we have a placeholder zero in the ones place and our tens place is our um, most precise value in that measurement. 
Moving along to the next one, it's in the opposite direction. So I'm gonna have to do Kelvin to Celsius and then Celsius to Fahrenheit. So in this first step, it's just a matter of subtracting the 273.15 to get a Celsius value. So after I did that, I got um, 37.05 degrees Celsius. Remember, you're keeping your whole value until you're completely done. That 37.05 is going to go into the temperature degrees Celsius place. So now I have 1.8 times 37.05 plus 32. And that gave me a Fahrenheit temperature of 98.69. Going back to my starting value, I noticed that I have precision to the tenths place. Um, and so I'm going to want to round that value to the tenths place as well. So our answer then will be 98.7 degrees Fahrenheit. That might sound kind of familiar, right? That's our body temperature, um, which is kind of crazy, right? You can say then, oh, I'm at 310.2. Kelvin or 98.7 degrees Fahrenheit.